That's the popular name for him. Van Gogh from the shape, but developed by uh, Willard. It was his patented timepiece, is what he called it, not a banjo. Okay. What I find interesting about it is uh, they're too ornate for my taste. The people go gaga over banjo clocks. They were made by many uh, makers. Uh, what I like about it is the technical details of how the, the thing is designed. It's a weight powered clock, and the weight is back there. Uh, the pendulum is in front. The pendulum is hung as high as you can, so it's hanging from something up there. Okay. How does it swing through the hands? <laughs> so the weight's back there? The weight's back there. And the pendulum's up front. And so it's being anchored up there, it has to swing through the hands. Weird. So, no, but it can. Hmm? It can't swing through the hands, can it? Oh. <laughs> okay. There's a rectangular section that straddles the shaft of the hand. Okay. Now this winds with a crank. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen plus, almost fourteen. And how long does the winding last for this clock? It'll run just over uh, seven days. One of the things, if I have a, a group here that has some mechanically minded person, I ask them this question. You see the beam that goes across? Yes. Center, there's a knife edge. On each end, there's a knife edge that the chains and the pan hang up from. Yes. Now, why does that beam have the You're great curved ends it. on it? Um. I have found very few people who look at it and give the right answer. Okay, I'm thinking. I use the word that is the giveaway. It's an equal arm balance. For it to work, the arms have to have the same length. So weights, standard weights on one pan will equate to the thing you're trying to weigh. Right. right. But how do you get the arms to be equal? For example, I haven't measured this. I intend to do it when I get a chance. I suspect this is good to one part in 10,000. Wow. That's based on the somewhat better grade uh, college or high school chem lab balance that I measured that was good to one part in 4,000. And then some lesser grade uh, balances that I have, but one of them is uh, one and a half parts in a thousand error. And I think this is good to one part in 10,000, which means that the distances from the center uh, knife edge mm -hmm. to the end ones is good to about a thousandth of an inch. You can't measure that with a ruler. Okay. It's, it's done by interchanging weights and doing some arithmetic. <laughs> and then how do you adjust it? You adjust it with a hammer. That's why it's curved like that. Um. Tap, tap. Not enough. Tap, tap. Oh, too much. Tap. <laughs> Until so doing your weight and arithmetic you get them to be equal. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you do. Wear your safety shoes. Yeah, don't drop it, because then you have to pick it up. This sleeve is there to keep people from winding it. Right. We have the pictures of that. We have the whole booklet. So we take that off. Then we can gauge the it's winding so crank with the winding wheel. Note, in wa clocks and watches, the gearing consists of wheels and pinions, <laughs> mm -hmm. not gears and pinions. Okay. Okay. So, so we speak of wheels. This is uh, the winding wheel. This is the great wheel, because it's usually the largest one in the clock. 
Then we have second wheel, third wheel, uh, scape wheel, which is the thing that connects the gear train to the uh, display. So now we wind. And we go only this far. Do not get it so that the edge of the weight that runs it gets over this cross piece. Oh, I see. Because then you won't get the full weight and the clock won't run. Having done that, now I have to start the clock going, which we do by moving the pendulum. Now, why it's the escape wheel? Because it lets the this anchor, so-called, with the pallets on it, allows it to escape with each swing. Oh, okay. There yeah, are, yeah, yeah, yeah. in general, um, five things in any timepiece, and even uh, modern quartz uh, timepieces. One of them is the time standard, a pendulum, a balance wheel, a quartz crystal oscillator. Uh, then there is a coupling of that to the gear train, which is going to count the oscillations of the time standard. That's what you have here. We have a source of power. Here it's a weight. Okay. It could be a spring. Uh, it can be a battery if it's an electronic thing. Okay. Then we have a display. Where you can... Now, if you're a purist, you don't need the display. You have to have a bell. That's where the word clock comes from, from the Latin for bell. Okay. So if you're a purist, no bell, it's not a clock. But very few people think that way. So no, you reason for uh, clocks attached to a mechanism to make a clock is that to do your religious services properly, you have to, per the monks, have to pray at various hours, day and night. Well, daytime, there's the sundial. You can pay attention to that. As a matter of fact, you would set your clock from the sundial. But if it's not uh, daytime, the monk, one monk at least, has to stay up and turn a sand glass periodically. <laughs> he can fall asleep in between. <laughs> so, so what are you going to do? You need a, a bell to wake him up. This is a rack and snail. This is the rack. It's a linear gear. This is the snail. The snail is stepped so that there's a different radial distance for each uh, uh, hour. And what happens here is when this is tripped by the clock mechanism, this will slide down to get things out of the way. It won't slide down because there's something interfering with it. But that would slide down, and the distance it slides down is determined by which of these steps. Okay. And then it will move up here. One step, okay. reach rotation, until this falls down and that stops the striking. Okay. So that if it's three o'clock and it strikes, and you trip it again, it'll strike three. And you strike it. So the disadvantage is of the count wheel is that if you get it out of step, you have a choice. Wait an hour. <laughs> or strike it all the way around. But you know what's going to happen if you strike it all the way around. Yeah. You'll go one too far, and then you got to do it over again. <laughs>